hi everyone so here i am with the most wanted video because as you know how important this video is there is no other way we can discuss the answers except this so i'm trying my best to explain the steps or whatever needed as much as possible in this video so you can check the answers for yourself and if you have any doubt you can uh, surely ask okay so uh, this is uh, the homework for chapter one lesson three corresponding to page three of the homework book or the practice book okay so the first question is of course you have to solve you now these are again for multiplying and dividing equations so this means d divided by eight equals six so divide is the question as i always tell you ask read the question so that you will know what to do so divide as you know it, the opposite of divide is multiply right so you're going to multiply d with six so that's going to give you d multiply six will give you 48 so the value of d is going to be 48 now let's check whether the answer we got is correct or not all what you need to do is replace the d with 48 now you can do that mentally too so 48 divided by 8 is that going to give you a 6 yes it's going to give you a 6 all right the next question is negative 5 equals n divided by 2 so n divided by 2 the opposite of divide is multiply so we are going to multiply 2 with negative 5 so 2 multiplied by negative 5 is equal to negative 10 let's check replacing the n with negative 10 are we going to get negative 5 so negative 10 divided by 2 now you must be very well aware of the rules if you're dividing a negative number with a positive one your answer must be a negative one so that gives you a negative five so the answer for question number two is n equals negative 10. the next one is 2p equals 54. now 2p is 2 multiplied by p as um, you know that they are multiplied that's why they both are together whereas we don't put a multiplication sign in between so 2 multiplied p equals 54. 2 multiplied, opposite of multiply is divide. So we are going to divide 54 by 2. Now 54 divided by 2 will give you 27 because you have to do the long division way. You all know how to do it. So that's why I'm not showing you that. Let's check whether the answer we got for p equals 27 is correct. 2 multiplied 27, is that going to give you 54? Yes, it is. Two sevens are 14, four down you carry one, two twos are four plus one is five. These all are mental math questions. You just need to do it mentally without using any paper, pen or calculator. So question number three, the answer is P equals 27. Moving on to question four, minus T equals two, minus T over two equals 12. Okay, here goes a minus T. This is the first time you've got a question like this. Now, remember the negative sign belongs to the T, so keep it like that, okay? We are not going to do anything. So divided by two will become multiplied by two. So minus T equals two multiplied by 12, okay? Now minus T equals 24. Now, there is a problem. How can a variable have a minus sign? A variable alone can never have a minus sign. Okay, now to get rid of this minus sign, what we need to do is we need to multiply both the sides with minus sign. Okay, now it is quite a deeper understanding of integers, but for now, just keep in mind if you have a negative sign with a variable, just give the negative sign to the number. So what does what happens then? It becomes t equals negative 24. Okay, so that's what happens there. Just for now, remember in the later lessons, you will know what happens. In fact, what do we have to do to get rid of the negative sign? But now I don't want to confuse you. For now, just remember that if the negative sign is with the variable, just give the negative sign to the number. Okay, so t equals negative 24. Now let's check whether we, the answer we got, that is t equals to negative 24 is correct or not. Now, this negative sign is there, which is already in the question. I did not do anything. This negative sign is already in the question. What is the value of t? We got 
we got t is negative 24. Now, why did I put them in parentheses? Because there are two negatives. Again, if I put two negatives, you will get confused if I put two negatives together. So that's why I separated them with a parenthesis. So negative is which is already in the question. This negative sign is for the negative we got from the answer divided by two. Now, as you know, negative, if you multiply two negative signs, what are you going to get? If you multiply two negative signs, you will get a positive sign, right? Correct. So as we, as you know that there is no number means there is always a one here. No number means it's a one. So negative one multiplied by negative 24 will give you a positive 24. Okay, so 24 divided by two will give you 12. Um, if you don't understand, it's okay. For now, you can just leave it because in the later coming on lessons, you will learn what these things are. Okay, but for a quick review, I will explain again. This is negative sign here. So we write the negative. What's the value of t we got? We got as negative 24. So the t also has a negative. The answer also has a negative. So negative and negative. Now here, there is no number means it's a negative one. Okay, what does this parenthesis mean? It means multiply, right? So negative one multiplied by negative 24 will give you a positive 24. You know, if you multiply two negatives, you will get the answer as positive, right? So positive 24 divided by two will give you 12. 24 divided by two is 12. So you have 12 on both sides of the equation, okay? Moving on to question number five. Negative 40 equals negative 4 uh, multiplied by x. So negative 4 multiplied by x, what does that say? That means we have to divide it. So we are dividing two negative numbers. When you divide two negative numbers, what's the answer you're going to get? Of course, you will get a positive number. So 40 divided by 4 is 10, but it's positive because both of them are negative. Now let's check the answer we got is correct or not. All what you need to do is replace x with 10. So negative 4 multiplied by 10 will give you negative 40, which means x is equal to 10 is the answer for question number 5. Now question number 6, 2r divided by 3 equals 16. Okay, now this one has a variable with the number, right? So keep that together. Do not do anything unless you solve the numbers first. So 2r divided by 3 means you will multiply. Opposite of divide is, divide is multiply. So you multiply them. So 2r is going to give you 48. Now, this equation, 2 multiply r equals 48. So now we need to get rid of the 2. We have to solve the 2. So 2 multiply r, what's the opposite of multiply? Divide. So r is going to be 48 divided by 2. So 48 divided by 2 is going to give you a 24. So r is equal to 24. Let's check the answer we got r equals 24 is correct. As you can see, 2 multiply 24 is 48. 48 multiplied by 3 is 16. So 16 are on both sides of the equation, which means r is equal to 24 is the answer for question number 6. Question number 7. And now uh, from question number 7 to 11, you don't need to check because we have done enough questions for checking. If you have checked well and fine, that's perfect. You can carry on, okay? Because that's just to check the answer is correct or not. If you have not checked also, it's fine. Okay, but so from question 7 to 11, I will not, sorry, 7 to 12, I will not be showing you the steps for division as you all know now how to check you by yourself. Okay, so y is equal to negative 49 divided by 7. Why did we divide? Because it is 7 multiplied by y. So y is going to be negative 7 as you are dividing a negative number with a positive 1. Now, if you want to check, you can simply 7 multiplied by negative 7 will give you negative you know, you can check it, okay? Number eight is negative 15 equals negative three and over five. Now, first we are gonna, this negative sign, now you might be confused, where does this belong to? When it is here, just give it to the first number. So it's gonna be negative three and, okay? So divide, which means we are gonna multiply. First, always solve the numbers. So five multiplied by negative 15, which is gonna give you a negative 75 because five multiplied by 15 is 75 and then the minus sign. Now, negative three n equals negative 75, which means n equals negative 75 over negative three. Now, both of them are negative, which means your answer should be positive, correct? 
So n is equal to 25. You can check it. Negative 3 multiplied by 25 will give you negative 75. Negative 75 divided by 5 will give you uh, negative 16. If you have done check, if you have done the checking part, well done. Question number 9. 9m equals 6. 9 multiplied by n equals 6, which means m equals 6 divided by 9. Okay, hold on. Can you divide 6 by 9? No, you can't, right? So when you cannot divide, you just check whether you can simplify it because there should be something to do in the question, right? So can you simplify 6 over n? Yes, you can. With which number? With 3. So divide the numerator and the denominator with 3. You have to choose the biggest number with which you can divide. In fact, you call that the GCF. Hopefully you can remember that from grade 7, you call, uh, grade 6. This is GCF. The GCF of 6 and 9 is 3. Okay, so 6 divided by 3 is 2. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Now you want to check, you can multiply 9 with 2 over 3. Let's do that mentally, okay? 2 over 3 multiplied by n. Now I'm doing the checking part. 9 multiplied by 2 will give you 18. 18 divided by 3 will give you 6, which means your answer is correct. See, I told you, you have to be quick enough to do that mentally too. Okay, number 10 is z divided by negative 3 equals negative 6. Um, so divide, again multiply. So that's going to be v equals negative 6 multiplied by negative 3. That will give you positive 18, because you divide multiplying two negative numbers. So v equals 18. You can check it by yourself. 18 divided by negative 3. Is that going to give you a negative 6? Yes, it is, because you're dividing 18 by a negative number. So your answer should be a negative 1 as well. This is a very easy question. 2.8 equals b divided by 4. Divide, so you that means you will multiply. So 4 multiplied by 2.8 is going to give you 11.2. Okay, um, so 11.2 divided by 4, that will give you 2.8. Yes, it will give you, you have to check in that way. I know most of you would have checked it. Well done for that. But here I'm not checking because um, you have enough knowledge of checking. Right? Okay, let's move on to question number 12. Now question number 12 is a little bit lengthier, but it's the same way we do. It's 3R divided by 4 equals 1.8. What I have been, what have I been telling you this much time? First, solve the numbers. So one over eight multiplied by four, the divide becomes multiplied. So that's going to give you four ones are four and four over eight, right? So the answer after solving this is going to be four over eight. Now, can we simplify this? Yes, we can simplify. So we simplify it with four. Four divided by four is one. Eight divided by four is two. So three R equals half. Okay, now is that the end of the question? No, because we have a three with the R, we have to also remove the three. So three multiplied by R, multiply. That means you have to do the opposite. Half multi divided by three over one, you cannot do. As you know, you have to do K, C, F, right? So it's going to be one half multiplied by three over one. We'll flip. Right, so that will become one over three. So one over one equals one, two over three equals six. So R is equal to one over six. So the answer for question number 12 is one over six. So that was all your questions for solving. So now let's move on to some problem solving questions. So you have to listen to me very carefully in these problem solving questions. As in the previous video, explanation video also, we have done quite few questions but well, let's go through this quickly the perimeter of a regular pentagon now pentagon is a five-sided shape like this as the one shown here okay a regular one means all the sides are equal so a regular pentagon has all five equal sides the perimeter now perimeter is the distance around the shape means you add them for example if this is two this is also going to be 2, this also is 2, this also is 2, this also is 2. So to find the perimeter, you add all. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. Or you multiply 2 with how many sides are there? 5. So you multiply 2 with 5, you will get the answer. This is how you find the perimeter. 
So keeping this in mind, let's solve this question. The perimeter of a regular pentagon is 41.5 centimeter. Means the perimeter after adding all the five sides, the answer is 41.5. Write and solve an equation to determine the length of each side of the pentagon. You need to find what is the side of each length. And what is the length of each side? So as I told you, either you add it five times or you multiply it five times. As the lesson is for multiplication and division, so let's write the multiplication equation. So I don't know what is the length side, right? Side length. So I keep it as S. So what are we multiplying by S? We are multiplying five because it has five sides. For so five S equals 41.5. So S is equal to? 41.5 divided by 5. Let's do this mentally. You cannot divide 4 by 5. So 41 by 5 will give you 8. So write 8. 5 8 will give you 40. That will have a balance of a remainder of 1. Then bring down the 515 divided by 5 will give you 3. And place the decimal point. So S is equal to 8.3. So the length of each side is 8.3. This is how you have to write the equation and solve it. Okay, if you don't understand, I'll quickly say it again. The perimeter of a regular pentagon, regular means all sides are equal. To find the perimeter, you add all the sides or multiply by the number of sides. So here this has five sides, five equal sides. If you multiply five with some number, it will give you 41.5. So this is your equation, five multiply some number equals 41.5. So to find that we divide S is equal to 8.3, which means each side of the pentagon is 8.3 centimeters. Okay, question number 14. In June 2005, Peter mailed a package from his local post office in Statesville, North Carolina to a friend in Radford, Virginia, for 2.07. All this is not needed. We only need this part. How much was the cost? The cost was 2.07. The first class rate at the time was 0 0.23 per ounce. So sometimes when you go to the post office to send some par parcel or to send any gift, so they weigh the parcel first. They, they weigh what you are sending. According to that, they will give you the rate. So for example, if you're sending a package for of uh, five kilograms somewhere okay if for your country maybe you're sending a box with five kilograms of something so if for one kg if it is 10 then for five kgs it's going to be 50 so the same is here for one it is 0 0.3 so he sent we don't know how much we have to find that out so we keep it as w so 0 0.23 w he paid all together 2.07 so here you need to be dividing 2.07 by 0 0.23. Now again, these are such uh, decimal division. So you need to do them very, very, very carefully. Okay, so to do that, I have to show you how to do it. Okay, so this is your question, 2.07 divided by 0 0.23. So let me write it down so that it will be clear to, I mean, how you will be, clear on how to do it. So we have 2.07 inside and 0 0.23 inside, outside this divisor. Okay, as you know, you cannot divide a number when the divisor is having a decimal. So as you know, you have to remove the decimal. So to remove the decimal, I need to move two places, one, two. So I need to move two places away. So if you're moving two places away from here, you need to move two places here as well. So finally, what's the number we are going to be dividing with? We are going to divide 207 with 23. I'm sure you must be knowing the rules of all this dividing by now. So two divided by 23, we cannot do. 20 divided by three also, 23 also we cannot do. So 207 divided by 23 will give you nine. So nine multiplied by 23 will give you 207. So your answer for the question is going to be um, nine for the question which we were solving now. So for the answer for question number 14 is going to be nine. So the weight of the package was nine ounces. This is how you have to solve. So you have learned two things here. You have learned how to solve the equation as well as to divide by decimals. Okay, the next question. 
Lola spends one third of her allowance on movies. She spends eight dollars per week, right, at the movies. Write and solve an equation to determine Lola's weekly allowance. So Lola has been given some money. She spends only one third of that. So one third of that is eight dollars. Only she's spending for the movies, nothing else. Okay. So one third of some amount, the amount which Lola is getting is eight because she's only spending one third. So this means one third multiplied by a, which means you will do the opposite, divide by one over three. So a is going to be equal to eight over one multiplied by three over one. No, no, we are doing KCF, keep change flip. I don't need to keep repeating it every time. Whenever you see a dividing with fraction question, you have to remember that you have to do KCF. Then eight multiplied three is 24 divided by one will give you 24. So the weekly allowance is $24 for Lola. Okay, this is how you write equations and you know now how to solve equations. So that was the end of the lesson. If you have done all correct, it's all right to do mistake. You learn by doing mistakes. You don't need to be perfect in getting everything right. If you do some mistakes, you will learn not to do it again. So it's all right to make mistakes. So keep learning, keep practicing, and uh, if everything is right, you can just pat your sh shoulders by yourself and say you have done a great job, okay? So till we meet again, keep learning and keep practicing math. I'll see you all in another video.